This is Volodymyr Kruc and our crash course of lectures simply about microbes. Last time we talked about mycorrhiza, that is a symbiosis of two organisms, plant and fungi. But an overwhelming majority of soil bacteria are free-living. They feed on plant sugars and in turn synthesize a huge amount of organic substances and also help plants to feed on mineral compounds. So let's look at several genera of bacteria, both widely known and less known, specific ones, which help plants with mineral nutrition. Let's start with the genus of bacilli, as it's one of the most common in the world. These are aerobic microorganisms, so they are not afraid of oxygen. And they can also form spores, an extremely stable form of dormancy that protects them from a huge range of adverse environmental factors. Among prominent representatives of this genus in soil are Bacillus subtilis and Bacillus megatarium. Bacillus subtilis, or hay bacillus, is one of the most common species of soil microorganisms. They synthesize a large number of bioactive substances, which help the immune system of plants. Also, the enzyme systems of Bacillus subtilis take an active part in the biodegradation of after-harvest stubble, hence the popular name, hay bacillus. In addition, Bacillus subtilis synthesizes a large number of biologically active compounds, such as phytohormones and amino acids, which greatly help plants throughout the vegetation process. Bacillus megatarium is one of the largest species of microorganisms known to man. Of course, it's impossible to see it with the naked eye, but it's a real mastodon in the world of bacteria. Bacillus megatarium falls slightly short of Bacillus subtilis in terms of its enzymatic capabilities. They are also actively involved in the creation of favorable microflora in the soil and in plants' mineral and nutrition. A separate subspecies, Bacillus megatarium varphosphaticum, is a very powerful phosphorus mobilizer. It releases phosphorus bonded in soil and significantly increases the efficiency of phosphorus mineral fertilizers. An interesting fact is that Bacillus megatarium is known as an endophytic bacterium. Endophytic bacteria live inside plant tissues, in their intercellular spaces. There they feed on plant sugars and synthesize amino acids and phytohormones. A close relative of bacilli is Penibacillus polymixa. Like other bacilli, it can release bonded phosphorus and potassium from the soil, and some of its strains are even able to fix atmospheric nitrogen. The variety of bacilli in the soil is extremely wide, so enumerating all of them would take a very long time. And in addition to them, there are also many other interesting microorganisms in the soil. One of them is Azotobacter. Its typical representative, Azotobacter crococcum, is an extremely powerful fixator of atmospheric nitrogen. Unlike all the well-known rhizobial microorganisms, it does not come into direct contact with plants, but it is not inferior to them in its effectiveness. In addition to fixing atmospheric nitrogen, Azotobacter crococcum perfectly helps plants to get out of stressful situations by synthesizing phytohormones and amino acids. For the finale, let me tell you about a genus of bacteria that is usually associated with the human body, not with plants, but the microbiological world can surprise. And Enterobacter microorganisms have become very beneficial companions of plants. Some of the species of this genus are able to fix atmospheric nitrogen and mobilize phosphorus and potassium. As well as other soil microorganisms, they synthesize their own range of biologically active compounds, phytohormones and amino acids. They provide favorable microflora for plants and help them grow healthy and strong. As we can see, different genera of bacteria can perform similar functions, complementing each other depending on the ambient conditions. Some bacteria start working in early spring immediately after the snow melts, when the soil is saturated with moisture. Others join in the work in summer, during a drought, continuing to support plants throughout the growing season. Various species of microorganisms provide complete cycles of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium and also take an active part in the decomposition of crop residues. For example, bacilli synthesize enzymes, pectinase and xylenase, which break down strong polysaccharides in the cells of plant walls. Various species of microorganisms can synthesize a wide range of organic acids, such as gluconic and catogluconic, malic, tartaric and citric acids. 
These organic acids can break down biologically unavailable forms of phosphorus and potassium, converting them into forms available to plants. Summing up, we can say that nature is very rational. Plants have unlimited access to the sun's energy and use it to store many different sugars. They generously share these sugars with insect pollinators, mycorrhizal fungi and soil microorganisms. In return, insects spread pollen, mycorrhiza expands the absorption zone of plant roots in the soil and the entire complex of soil microorganisms provides plants with biologically available forms of phosphorus and potassium. That's all for now. I hope I've managed to tell you about microorganisms simply. You're welcome to ask your questions in the comments and subscribe to our channel. Goodbye.